everybody and welcome to weekly strategic finance tips from the startup station. In this video, we're going to talk about most frequent mistakes that um, I see in startup financial models. And this is a very dear subject to my heart. And so the first one is that most founders provide their income statement in place of a full financial model. And this means that they don't have a, a full view of their business. They don't understand how income is converted to cash. They don't have a cash flow statement. They don't um, really consider, uh, you know, the use of funds, which is like how uh, does the income statement they put together translate into the needs of the company over what term. Um, they do not have a financial summary of all the performance metrics and many other parts of the model which help investors evaluate their business in a comprehensive way, which also helps them make good decisions about financial prospects of their company. Mistake number two, most founders don't know how to correctly project revenues. This is such uh, a common mistake, uh, especially if they're coming company pre-revenue. Right. So what they typically do is that they either project revenue based on arbitrary percentage of market share or growth rates. And why is it a mistake? When you do it this way, you are not really tying the results to their capital or labor constraints or product development constraints or acquisition costs or sell cycle or go to market strategy. Right. So you have these results and they're not really tied to what you're going to do as a company to get those results or how much money you have at any given point. And as a result, your numbers are completely unjustifiable. Most funders do not calculate uh, use of funds correctly. So specifically, they don't account for working capital, asset purchases or contingency. So what is the working capital? Um, it's the capital required to uh, run your company day to day. It arises uh, in three situations. If you extend credit to customers, if you get credit from suppliers or if you have inventory, right? So this is not the same as your operating budget. These are costs required to operate your business. It's, uh, um, it arises because there is a difference in timing between when you uh, spend money uh, and sell something or uh, when you have to pay your bills and you get services for it. Asset purchases um, have to be modeled differently, right? These are not expenses. Uh, there's a capital expenditure, so there are assets on your balance sheet. And finally, contingency. You know, um, it's great to uh, do very detailed modeling on your costs. However, you can't account for the unexpected. And sometimes things take longer, or sometimes um, you may incur costs that you haven't been aware of at the time that you did your projections, et cetera. And so 10 to 20% contingency is highly recommended on any budget that you do to specifically account for that. And um, uh, however, I do not recommend that you do a 50% contingency because that just means you don't know what your costs are. But 10 to 20% is absolutely fine. Uh, valuation, right? So valuation is a big issue. It's missing from many models that uh, we look at at the startup station. Uh, you should um, take our valuation class if you like to learn about eight models used for early stage startups. The one that we use in our modeling is called the venture capital method. And it's a model that's really based on the company fundamentals. Of course, you can also use comparables, but if uh, the comparables are based on multiples uh, and uh, in the financial data, which doesn't match yours, you can't really use those numbers either. So it's not like you can just blindly use whatever the comparables are without baking um, the multiples up with your performer. And finally, um, you know, sometimes founders don't know how to formulate assumptions, define key performance indicators and formulate business logic, right? So what is, what is a financial model at its core, right? You have some strategic decisions and these are your financial model inputs. And then there is a business logic which converts these inputs into financial data. And then there are key performance indicators which, you know, essentially tell you, did I create a good plan from the financial perspective? Am I um, 
you know, are my users growing? Is my customer acquisition cost decreasing? Are my revenues moving in a direction that I want them to move? Am I making too much money or too little money across different revenue streams? What do I need to rethink from the strategy perspective even before I begin executing it? Because maybe that plan is a bad plan from the beginning. And it's extremely important to create this engine so that you as an executive and you as a founder, you have... Um, the tool and this knowledge to help you make better decisions, but to also accelerate your fundraising process. Because guess what? This model will make investors comfortable and confident that you know what you're doing, you can react fast to market feedback, and they can get a return on their money. And here you go. Uh, if you like this video, please share with your friends and colleagues on social media. Sign up for our YouTube channel for more strategic finance and financial modeling and other useful tips every day. Join us on Clubhouse every Thursday at 11 a.m. Search for Startup Station in order to join our community and sign up for our social media. If you wanna learn more about our framework for modeling early stage startups, there is a free masterclass. The link is in the description on how to build credible financials for your venture. Thank you for listening and I will see you next week.